topic this week is the psoas. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, um, it's a deep structural muscle that supports our spine. Um, it connects our upper body to our lower body. And some call it a muscle, but um, some teachers that I study with actually refer to it as an organ because it's much more complex than just a muscle. Um, it's very responsive to our emotional states, our, it's tied into our nervous system, and it's sometimes referred to as the fight, flight, freeze muscle or organ um, because when we feel like we're under any kind of a threat, the psoas will contract and it has the effect of kind of pulling us into a fetal position. So, you know, like that feeling when we want to shut the world out, you know, the psoas is very responsive to what, what's going on in our lives. Um, it also gets kind of compromised because of modern lifestyles of sitting a lot. So because we're sitting in chairs, the psoas is, is in a passively kind of shortened position. Um, so it's kind of different than we're going to do some active things with the, with the psoas tonight to sort of strengthen, but that passive sitting and kind of maybe collapsing um, over time, the psoas get shorter, tighter, weaker, um, and then eventually becomes exhausted. So I've used kind of the um, example of like, if I were to hold something in my hand, I'm just gonna grab, grab a pillow, it's very light, but if I were to hold this up for an hour, it's gonna start to feel heavy, or holding this up over my lifetime, it's exhausted, right? So that's what happens with the psoas. It can get very exhausted. Um, it can get dried out. Um, it's supposed to be a very supple, kind of fluid, um, organic sort of organ. Um, and so one of the teachers, she's like a, I always like go to the people that are experts on this topic. Um, her name's Liz Cook, and she wrote several books just on the psoas. Um, so she calls it the tenderloin of the body, like, you know, the juicy, the juicy tenderloin. And when it's exhausted, it's kind of like dehydrated in a way. So we want to bring suppleness into the psoas. So the first thing we want to do is work on releasing it. Because of it being chronically shortened and tight, um, we don't want to go right into stretching it. So here's another little example. So if I had a rope, and I tie a knot in that rope, and then I try to stretch that rope. What happens to that knot? It's getting tighter. And so we don't want the knots in our psoas to get tighter. We kind of want to think about them dissolving and releasing so that we're not you know, tightening that knot. So the first thing we're going to do is spend about five minutes in a releasing posture tonight. Now, I just recommend it to do it longer, like even up to 10 minutes, but I don't want to take too much of our class time to do that. So we're going to do um, a five-minute hold in this psoas releasing position. It's very, very simple. So we can do it in one of two ways. Um, if you have a sofa or a chair nearby, that's actually the best because you're just going to put your shins up on a chair or a sofa. If you don't have that nearby, we're going to work with some props. If you have a bolster, um, if you have some blocks, some blankets, or some bed pillows, um, we can make it work without um, having the chair or the sofa. So I'm going to show both. I'm going to bring a chair in, and I'm going to show you what it looks like with a chair. And then I'm also going to show you what it looks like um, using some props. So Jessica, we're working on the psoas tonight. So we're going to be starting in a moment um, in a psoas releasing posture. And then once we released it a bit, then we're going to move into some strengthening and, and stretching, but know the difference between stretching and releasing. So we really want to think about releasing as opposed to stretching. My cat just stole my block. Can't take it. No, go on, go on. <laughs> Let me choose on them, so I have to hide them from him. Um, okay, so the difference between stretching and releasing. So stretching, we all know what that is, right? We know the sensation of stretching, but releasing is more about relaxing the muscle, breathing into it, and again, thinking about that sense of dissolving any knots or blockages in it. 
Okay, so I'm um, gonna go head back to Matt unless you have any questions about all of that. And then I'm gonna show you the two different options that you have for this opening position, okay? All right. Feel free to unmute <clears throat> if you have any questions. Okay, so I've got a chair here and this is gonna be the first option that you have. If you have a chair or your sofa nearby, um, if you have a hard chair, you might wanna put a blanket over top or like a pillow. And all we would do here is put our legs up. And you wanna think about kind of a 90 degree angle here so that the shins, I'm sorry, the thigh bones are straight up and down and the spine is in a very neutral position, okay? So if you don't have a chair or a sofa, then we're gonna to go to option two. Let me take that out of the way. So option two, if you have a bolster or some bed pillows, you're going to take um, your blocks and put them kind of like this and you're gonna make yourself a little shelf. So the higher the shelf, the better, because we wanna to get toward that 90 degree angle. So I'm putting a bolster here. You could use two like firm bed pillows instead. If you don't have a bolster. And then I'm even putting like a yoga blanket on top to give it a little bit more height. So grab what you have. And then again, you would put your shins up. Now you're not gonna be as much in that 90 degrees here and that's okay. You're still gonna be able to relax your lower back. And that's what I really wanna focus on here is being able to relax the lower back. Okay, so go ahead and figure out what's gonna work for you at your house. And if none of those options work, you can do a simple constructive rest pose on your back. So if you don't have any firm pillows and it's just your tower is collapsing, you're just simply going to do feet flat, knees bent. And perhaps let your knees drop into center and widen your feet. So that's a third option, okay? The first one is really ideal, but don't you know stress if that doesn't work for you at your house, okay? All right. So now that you are in position, I want you to just use the word release as your mantra right now. So think about that word and use your breath to just relax into this pose. Now the psoas has many functions and I've talked a little bit about, you know, it helps us structurally, keeps us upright, um, gives us our good posture. But when it's weak and tight, um, it really kind of wreaks havoc on our lower back because its actual main job is lumbar, lumbar sacral stabilization. So our lumbar spine is the lower curve of the back and the sacrum is that bone at the bottom. So when, this, when we're sitting a lot and our psoas is getting short, it's getting tight, it's getting exhausted, um, our pelvis will tend to be out of alignment. And what happens is that the, the psoas pulls on the lumbar spine, pulls us into an anterior tilt, and then we get compression in our lower spine. So what I'd like you to do now is take a moment to observe your back and kind of notice what is that lumbar curve like? Does it feel pronounced or does it feel like it's kind of relaxing into the ground? And with the legs up, it's probably more relaxed than if you had your legs straight out. If you're one of those people that when you have your legs straight out, your lower back bothers you, this is probably part of the equation. The next thing I'd like you to observe is your back ribs. And notice what it feels like in your back ribs. Are they kind of 
flush with the ground? Do they feel like they're maybe a little away from the ground or very light on the ground? Because the other thing that happens in this compensation pattern, when <clears throat> the psoas pulls on our lumbar spine and we go into that anterior tilt, um, more often than not, the rib cage thrusts forward. And then we get even more tension in our lower back. So we'll take another minute or so here, just observing. And use your breath to release. Think about your lower back softening into the ground, melting into the ground. Think about your back ribs settling, spreading into the ground. And just stay with a very nice, soft breath. So I'm going to give you guys about one more minute here, and then we'll begin with some somatic movement to start to bring some awareness and more releasing to the psoas. And we'll move into a little bit of core work tonight for some strengthening. Last few breaths. All right, so that was about five minutes. So when you're ready, we're gonna slowly start to maybe bring those knees into the chest for a moment. Maybe you wanna do a little rock across your lower back. And then when you feel ready, let's go ahead and move um, any props out of the way that you might've been using, or if you were off your mat at your sofa, you could go ahead and come back to your mat. And by the way, I mentioned um, tennis balls for tonight. Um, I changed my mind. We're going to use a single ball tonight instead of the ball in the sock. So um, you can just take one out of the sock if that's what you have. Um, but we don't need that until later. But just, just a heads up on that. So sometimes I change my mind. Sorry about that. So now we're going to go ahead and come back down onto our backs. And we're gonna see what it feels like to take the legs out straight. So we talked about you know, this before with the spine. So now notice after being in that passive, kind of relaxing position for a bit, how it feels now to extend your legs out straight. And what does that lower back curve feel like? So again, if we have that very pronounced pelvic tilt, there's gonna be a big arch in our low back and it might not feel very good, okay? So hopefully it's feeling a little better. From here, we're gonna come into a full body stretch. And we're gonna do our movement that's called the up slip down slip. I do this one a lot, but it is actually one of the best ones for the psoas. So as you inhale, we're gonna reach through the right arm and the right leg and press the right thigh into the ground. And as you exhale, we're just gonna let it go and relax. Now that's important. We're not gonna go right side to side. We're gonna relax in between. So left side, inhale, left arm, left leg, and press your left thigh into the ground. And then exhale, relax. So let's go ahead and do a few more rounds side to side. Inhale, reach. And as you press the thigh down, that's gonna help open that psoas and hip flexor a bit and release. Keep going a few more cycles. So a lot of times that thigh bone pops up. And when we're standing, if our legs are not directly under the pelvis, uh, that can create a lot of issues. So feel what you have to feel here. So maybe sense and feel into, you know, anywhere you feel a good stretch. 
and then feel it soften and relax. Let's do one more round. Good. Okay, relax your arms down, take a pause. So we talked about psoas job in stabilizing the lumbar sacral area, but another job it has is hip flexion. So hip flexion is when we pull the knee into the chest, um, curl up in that fetal position I talked about, but it's actually not its primary job. However, when certain other muscles are weak and or asleep, um, the psoas will take over that job and then it contributes to that exhaustion of the, the muscle organ. Okay, from here, bend both knees, feet flat. Take your right knee and drop it out to the side like you're doing bound angle. And we may have done this one before, I don't, I don't know, but it's called unwinding, but it's a variation of it. So right knee is dropped out to the side, tuck your right foot behind your left heel. Then reach down with your left hand and see if you can catch your right foot and pull the right foot a little over to the left. So already you might be feeling a bit of a quad stretch. Now the quad is very much connected to the psoas. Part of the quadriceps, there's four of them, quad, four, right? One of them's called rectus femoris, and that is the only quadricep out of the four that is also a hip flexor. So it works with the psoas and by the fascia, they are tied together. Keep holding on to the foot and then take your right arm overhead into a full body stretch. And you might even wanna watch this one for a moment if you're not sure about what I'm doing. I'm gonna take my left knee and drop it over to the right, roll onto my right outer hip, and then look at my right hand, tip my head, and now pull on your foot, arch your back, and press your right thigh, outer thigh, into the ground. And then as you exhale, we're gonna come back to the beginning and you can keep that arm overhead and keep holding your foot. Now, if you can't get your foot, <laughs> my cats are playing with my iPad, sorry guys. <laughs> um, if you can't get the foot, you can try using a strap or you could just kind of let the foot go, okay? So whatever works for you. Let's continue that movement a few rounds. So inhale, knee drops over, look at your right hand, press your right outer thigh into the ground, and then release back to the start. As you come into it, you're also gonna be engaging your gluteal muscles, which helps open up the front of the hip and release. Make sure you have a nice releasing phase before you start your next one. So releasing the quads, stretching the quads also is beneficial for the psoas. So this one here is getting quad, but it's also getting a little bit of into that hip flexor region. And let's do two more on this side. Make sure you listen to your body. If this bothers your knee, you could even let go of the foot. Last one. Okay, release. And let's go ahead and slide both legs out for a moment. And just notice that right leg versus the left leg. Maybe noticing energy flow through that right side. The psoas also helps ground us. So if our pelvic tilt is off, we're not gonna feel as grounded and we may even have a little more um, anxiety pattern in the body and the mind. So addressing the psoas can really help our emotional states. Let's go ahead and do our other side. So bend the knees. I'm gonna flip around so that I'm not turning away from you guys. 
And now left knee is going to drop out like bound angle. Slide that left foot behind the right heel. And then right hand is going to reach down and see if you can catch your foot. Draw it a little over to the right. And then take your left arm and reach it up and overhead. Full body stretch. Then from here, take the right knee over toward the left. Roll towards your left outer hip. And look up at your hand. Arch your back. Press the thigh down into the ground. And then release. And have a complete release before you continue. So that release is super important to this work we're doing tonight. That's our key word for the psoas is release. Engage your glute muscles to help open up the fronts of the hips. We talk about this a lot. When we sit, there's always a crease in the front of the hip. And the work we're doing today will work to open up that crease. Couple more rounds. Last one. All right, go ahead and come back all the way to the center. And then let's straighten both legs for a moment. Just take a moment to feel, sense, notice. You can think of the psoas as a messenger, right? So what's going on with it is often a message that things are not in balance in the body. So things that, you know, if we're getting pain, we're getting discomfort in our lower back, that's the psoas letting us know that maybe we need to address some of these things. Okay, from here, full body stretch on your inhale. And as you exhale, right knee into the chest, use your hands to pull it in. Now, your other leg, so you can keep it straight, flex the foot and press the thigh down. And we're gonna take an inhale and as we exhale, draw that knee in a little closer. Now we're gonna let the hands go. Keep the knee in toward the chest and let the arms come down, okay? Now take an inhale and as you exhale, pull the knee in a little closer. As you reach through your straight leg, press your left thigh down, flex your left foot. And then let that right knee move a little away, okay? So take an inhale and as you exhale, pull it in. So now we're doing more of an active range of motion. Inhale, knee moves away. Exhale, pull it in as you reach through the opposite leg. And two more. Straight leg reaches as right leg pulls in. And now we're using that hip flexor here for strength. Okay, let that right leg slide all the way out. And then we'll do the other side. Inhale, full body stretch. And then let's go ahead and bring the left knee in. Wrap your hands around your shin. First, we're passive. So we're using the hand to pull it in. Other leg, reach the right leg long. Press your thigh down and reach through your heel. Take an inhale, exhale, pull that left knee in a little closer. And now relax your arms. And we'll do a few rounds active. So take an inhale, exhale, pull the left knee in, reach through the right leg and repeat. Inhale, exhale, pull in, lengthen. A few more rounds. Two more. Good, and then release both legs out, take a pause.
so as also can influence our breathing. So if it's tight, um, it's tied in with our diaphragm um, through the fascia. So it can really inhibit our breathing if it's tight. Um, so you might find as we release some things in the psoas that your breath improves. From here, we're gonna bend the knees and roll to the side, come on up to sit and we're gonna extend the legs out straight and bring the hands behind you and you have a slight leaning back. So as we lean back a little bit, we're gonna again be doing some core work here. So very similar to what we just did. So make sure your shoulders are back, your chest is open. We're gonna bring the right knee into the chest. And then extend and bring the left knee in toward the chest. And extend. And now we're gonna bring both knees in. So you might need to bend those elbows a little bit, squeeze it in and extend. So it's a single, single, double. Okay, keep it going. Single, single, double. Try not to go too quickly here. I really want you to work it and pull the knee in toward the chest. Good, let's do one more round. Good. Okay, from here, both feet flat. Hands are still on the floor behind you. At any point, feel free to shake them out a little bit. All right, so we're gonna pick the right foot up off the floor and extend the leg. So now we're using that quadricep, we're using the hip flexor, and we're gonna take that leg out to the side and hold it there. So we're using the inner thigh here, but we're also using the psoas and the rectus femoris. Bring it back in and release. Other side. Lift the foot, extend the leg. So the knees are kind of in line with each other. And then take that leg out to the side. So psoas attaches to our inner leg. And the inner thighs are one of those supporting muscles that when it's weak, the psoas tends to kind of take over. Come back and release. Let's do that one more time each side. Extend, keep the foot flexed, take it out, hold it. Bring it back in and release. And one more time. Good, bring it back in and release. Okay. From here, Still with those hands on the floor. Again, if you need a break, shake them out. Keep your shoulders back and your chest open and try to pick both feet up and then set them back down. And try that again with both feet up. Keep them low and set them back down. So not too far. One more time, pick them up. Now this time stay and see if you can lift your shin so we work toward boat pose. So boat pose is a good strengthener for the hip flexors. Maybe you're gonna reach your arms forward. If that's too much, keep your hands on the floor. Then maybe you're gonna straighten your legs a little bit. And then from here, we're gonna go into a bound angle, but in the air, don't put the feet down and back to boat. So it's either bent knee or straight leg boat into a, like an air bound angle, feet hover. Good, and one more time, extend. And bound angle now, set those feet down and come into a little fold, release it all. And let's take a few breath cycles there just to release. Here's what I found. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take two more breaths where you are. All right, slowly start to bring yourself up and we're coming into tabletop position. And let's do our five rounds of cat cows. 
So cat cows are such a great little series of movements. As you inhale, you're arching your back, your tailbone's lifting up. And as you exhale, you're rounding and your tailbone's pulling forward. So keep that going and let the focus be on the movement of your pelvis. Because as I mentioned, one of the things psoas can do is pull our pelvis out of alignment. So it's good to get that kind of rotational feeling in the hips and in the pelvis. Um, so we can repattern where sometimes we're stuck. Um, and we're gonna work with that a bit more in our lunges tonight as well. After five rounds, go ahead and move back into a child's pose. Take a brief pause. Hold that one more breath. And then we're coming back up into tabletop position. <clears throat> Do feel free to pad your knees, by the way. We're going to be here for a little bit. We're going to take the right leg straight back and lift it up. And as you lift it up, we're using the glute muscles a bit. That's another player here. The glutes are often sleepy um, from sitting, and that can affect things here as well. Then we're going to bend the knee, <clears throat> keep the foot flexed. And try to lift your thigh, lift your thigh, lift your thigh, and then lift your head, lift your chest. And as you lift that thigh, press the other shin into the floor. Maybe you can get it a little higher. And then slow motion, bring your knee in towards your chest and round your spine. And push through your palms. Squeeze it in. And then repeat. Inhale, lift the thigh, lift the thigh. High as you can, opposite shin might press down and then pull it in, pull it in. Go slowly. And let's do one more round on this side. That's it, lift the thigh up. And try not to let the foot drift in and out. So try to keep it even. And one last time, knee in toward the chest, squeeze it in and then release. Okay, brief child's pose if you want one. You can also come up to a brief dog if you want to get off your knees for a bit. And then we'll do the other side. So when you're ready, let's go ahead, come back up in the tabletop position. Take your left leg back. Lift that leg and then bend the knee, flexing the foot. And then inhale, lift the thigh, lift the chest, press that opposite shin into the floor and then round and bring it in, squeeze. And repeat, so we're doing three rounds total. Be really mindful, go slowly, because sometimes we just want to get it over with, but then we're going to lose out on some of these uh, benefits here. Okay, go ahead, release back to child's pose. We go too quickly, we get into momentum, and then we're not going to be activating what we need to activate. Okay. Now grab your set of blocks. You're going to put your block short end to short end, like this, in the middle of your mat. Actually, maybe like two thirds back. So they're going to go under your thighs and then put a blanket on top of it. And like if you have a yoga blanket, you might like fold it in half. So it's kind of the same size as your blocks. Okay. Once you have that, we're going to come down with our thighs on top of those blocks and come down onto your forearms. Okay. Now keep a little tone in your belly because if I let my belly go, then my lower back kind of sinks in. So I'm gonna keep some tone in my belly, keep some pressing into my arms. And you could have palms like sphinx or you could clasp your hands, whatever you like. And we're gonna lift both shins and keep the feet a little flexed. Now from here, <clears throat> think about keeping that belly a little toned. 
but let your hips come a little forward. So you start to create a little bit of a back bend. And then press into the arms and lift up through your chest. So get a nice stretch in that lower abdomen. Hold that one more breath. Now we're gonna be gradually deepening this. So if it's too much for you, you can always repeat this. Go ahead, let the shins and feet come down. Now come up onto your hands. And if you can, your arms are gonna be straight. If you need to, you can always bend them. We're gonna lift those shins and feet again. Good, keep some tone in the belly. Push into your hands, think about lifting your chest. And then we're gonna look over your right shoulder. And then look over your left shoulder. And as I go side to side, as I look over my right shoulder, I'm gonna push into my left palm and then push into my right palm. Think about moving away from your pelvis. So think about your rib cage, moving away from the pelvis. Go side to side. So you're actually kind of trying to get deep into the low abdomen here. Good, and then release, shins come down, slide yourself back, move your blocks a little forward and come into a child's pose with your head and arms up on the blocks. All right, let's go ahead and set those um, props to the side. And if you have a blanket on your mat, now will be a good time to take it off. Okay, and then grab your blocks, put them toward the top of your mat. Keep blankets nearby if you want to add any padding for lunges. And then both hands up on the blocks and we'll step the right foot forward. Coming into a low lunge. And then from here, bring your hands up on your front thigh. Now imagine your pelvis has like wheels on it. And what I want to do is kind of Turn the wheel backward so that my tailbone hooks forward. And then I'm going to bring hands to the lower abdomen. From here, we're going to draw the lower abdomen back and look down and almost round your spine like you're coming into a cat cow, like the rounded position. Keep the abdomen engaged and back and start to lift your chest up. So I want you to keep that feeling of the core engaged and then keeping the abdomen back, slide deeper into your front knee. Now, the minute I let my abdomen go, then I crunch that lower back. So keep the abdomen back, keep the tailbone hooking forward and try to find as much of that neutral pelvis as you can. From here, let's take the arms and reach them up. Keep that tailbone hooking forward and try to touch the ceiling with your arms, reach nice and high. Good, and then from here, bring your hands down to your blocks and walk your blocks on the inside of your front foot. Walk your front foot out toward the outer edge of your mat. And now you might wanna lower your blocks. And we're gonna stay up on the hands if you can. Okay, from here, tone the abdomen, draw the abdomen a little back again. And we're gonna tuck the back toes and lift the back knee off the ground. From here, push your back heel back and get a nice little calf stretch. Keep the back heel anchored back and move your front knee away from the back heel. So we try to feel like we're stretching the inner legs away from each other. And notice what you feel in that back leg, you know, that rectus femoris, the hip flexor region. 
Now from here, we're gonna to start to lower that back knee down, but super slow. So lower it down, lower it down, but don't touch. Lower it, lower it, and then hover it right above the ground. That's it. Hold there another breath if you can. There might be a little shaking going on. And then let it come all the way down. From here, step your foot back. And let's come into Downward Facing Dog. Pedal it out, move around a little bit. And then inhale to Plank Pose. And we're gonna lower all the way down. You're gonna slide your block that. We are gonna get to that other side, don't worry. We're gonna take a little break here. So this one is kind of a strengthener for the back chain, for the glutes, for the inner thighs. So kind of the supporting muscles here. Bring your head down to the floor and interlace your hands behind the back of your head. Keep your elbows wide. And then turn your feet so that the inner edges of your feet touch. And you're gonna lift them off the floor a little bit. So the big toe side of your feet connect and then hands behind the back of your head. So it's a little hard to talk while I do this. From here, start to lift your head, your chest, your thighs, elbows wide, and then lower back down. Relax and let it all go. And we're gonna do that two more times. So hands behind the back of the head, inner feet touch, and then lift up like you're doing locust pose. That's it. This is a tough one. Do the best that you can. And then relax, let it all go. One more time when you're ready. You need to rest, rest. Inner edges of the feet touch. Shins and feet are lifting, elbows stay wide. Feel that strength in the back chain and then let it all go. Good, relax your arms, maybe windshield wiper your shins a little bit. And then press yourself up into tabletop position and we'll do that lunge sequence on the second side. Step your left foot forward. And then bring your hands up onto your front thigh. Pause here and then dial the wheels of the pelvis so that you feel like your tailbone is hooking forward. Hands to the abdomen, draw the abdomen back, kind of round your back for a moment. Keep that engagement and then lift your head and chest. Keeping the abdomen back, slide into your front knee and then reach your arms up. Try not to collapse into your lower back. Keep drawing the abdomen back and the tailbone forward, and then reach your arms as high as you can. Good, release your hands down to your blocks. Bring the blocks on the inside of your front foot. Walk the front foot over. And then maybe you wanna lower your blocks. Okay, draw the abdomen back and then tuck the toes, lift the back knee. So we're keeping that lower abdominal area engaged. It's a really good supporting muscle for the psoas is the transverse abdominus. Now press that back heel back, keep it anchored back and move the front knee away from the back heel. So inner thighs are kind of moving away from each other. Stay here another breath, and then we're gonna do that, that torture move of starting to lower that back knee down very slowly. So slowly start to bring it down, but don't touch. And as you get close to the floor, just hover. One more breath. And then let it come all the way down. Step that foot back, downward facing dog. Good, 
Good, take a moment in your dog. <clears throat> And then go ahead and shift forward the plank, lower all the way down. And then from here, lift up into an upward facing dog if you can. Straighten your arms. We're going to keep the knees on the floor. So just a modified upward facing dog. And then push in your hands. Draw your abdomen a little back and start to lift up through your chest. Hold it there another moment. Nice full breath. And then release. Take a little pause, turn your head to one side. We're going to repeat and we're going to add on. So come back to center. Straighten your arms if you can, if you need to, bend them. And then bend your right knee and curl that foot in. As you curl that foot in, lift up through your chest. And then release and turn your head the other way. And we'll do the other side. Come back through center, lift up, and then bend the other knee, squeeze it in, and then push through your hands, lift up through your chest, get that length through the lower abs, and release down, turn your head the opposite way. One more round. If you can, both legs are going to bend. Back through center. Straighten the arms. Bend both knees. And then push down. Lift up from low in the abdomen. Shoulders back. And then release. Let it all go. Give your hips a little wiggle or a little windshield wiper. And then downward facing dog. Okay, from here, inhale your right leg up and step your right foot forward, coming into a warrior two position. Now, if you don't like to step through, you can do this sequence without stepping through. You can just step out wide, but we'll do it vinyasa style. If you prefer, you can just step out into the poses, okay? So warrior two, arms or shoulder height, Press the floor away with your feet. And then find that sense of the tailbone drawing down, the abdomen drawing back. And we're gonna come into side angle from here, but we're gonna do a very specific variation tonight. So listen up carefully. Bring your front forearm on your front thigh, back hand on the hip for a moment. We're gonna be taking this into a psoas releasing stretch. But there's two key things I want you to think about that will help you balance. First is tailbone forward and in. Second thing, back thigh, really firm it and keep it pressing back. So tailbone forward, back thigh back. It's gonna give you a good boundary and good stability. From here, take your top arm up, Turn your palm toward the front of your room and take your arm over your ear coming into extended side angle. Okay, now reaffirm your tailbone forward and your thigh back. And imagine you have a, a crayon in your top hand and you wanna draw a line on the wall in front of you. And you wanna draw that line in a big arc toward the back of you, okay? So you might wanna watch for a moment. I'm going to keep my tailbone in, thigh back, and start to trace that arm toward the wall behind me. So it is a little bit of a back bend. Keep pressing your tailbone forward and your thigh back to open up, and you get that nice opening through the psoas. Good. Bring it back to center and come back up to warrior two. So I hope you're able to figure that one out because if you get it right, it feels really good. Reverse your warrior from here, back hand to back thigh. Top arm, think about reaching it up and then back. Good, back to warrior two. Straighten your front leg. We're gonna do the same thing in triangle. So first let's do a reverse triangle. 
And think about reaching up into the back. And then start to come back through a warrior two and then bring that hand, front hand down to your shin, your ankle or a block, top arm could reach up. Okay, pause here. Draw your hips toward the back of your mat, which will lengthen and deepen your front hip crease. Then tailbone in, back thigh super strong, and we're gonna take that top arm over your ear. Keep that tailbone pressing forward and start to trace your line with your hand toward the wall behind you. And you're opening up into a bit of a back bend. Back leg's gotta be super strong. Tailbone forward, tailbone forward. Go as far as you can. And then come back through center, back to warrior two. Cartwheel your hands down. Optional vinyasa, do you wanna go through cobra lower down? Optional child's pose if you want a little break. Or you can go right to dog and stay in dog. Very good. Okay, take another breath where you are. Just kind of catch your breath, reset yourself. And we're gonna do that sequence on the other side. So when you're ready, you're gonna either come into your warrior two by stepping out or lift your left leg up and step it through. And we come into warrior two with the left foot forward. Okay, <clears throat> so push your feet down into the ground, get stable. Lengthen your tailbone down, draw your abdomen back and then side angle, forearm on the thigh, start with your top hand on your hip so that we can do that action of pulling the tailbone forward and the back thigh back, make that back thigh nice and strong. And from here, take the arm, reach it up and over your ear. Now, before you come into that back bend, strong tailbone forward, thigh back, press into your feet, and then start to lean back, take that arm, trace a line toward the wall behind you like a big arc. And just feel what there is to feel. Like for me, I get a big stretch in that back, thigh, hip flexor, psoas area. Come back through center, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Reach up and back. Good, back to warrior two. Straighten your front leg, reverse triangle. And then triangle pose, reach forward and down. Hand comes down, shin, ankle, block, whatever works for you. And before we draw that arc, press into your feet. Pull the tailbone forward, back thigh roots back. So you're really heavy in that back heel. And then arm reaches over your ear. Try to reach for the front of the room first, get that length, and then trace a line, like a big arc toward the wall behind you. Keep pressing your tailbone forward. It's like a counterbalance. Then we have to ground through the feet. Good, and then release, come back up, warrior two. Heart your hands down, optional vinyasa, down dog, or same options, child's pose is also available. That's a really deep sequence, so listen to your body. All right. Take another breath or two where you are. And then we're gonna make our way down to the floor and grab one block. So we're gonna do some work in supported bridge, so a couple different variations. We're gonna start with the block on low. Slide the block under the back of your pelvis. We pause there for a moment. And then just 
kind of walk your feet in so that you can lift your tailbone and move your tailbone a little forward so you feel like you've lengthened your lower back and then set your feet back down. From here, right knee into the chest. Keep that right knee squeezing in and start to extend your left leg. And we're gonna lift the left heel above the ground a couple of inches, keep it low and try to touch the wall in front of you with your left heel. So reach through that leg and then set that heel back down. Hold that for another breath. And then from here, extend the right leg up, hold behind the back of the right thigh and reach through both heels. Like you're trying to touch the ceiling with your right heel and the wall in front of you with your left heel. Gently hug the midline with the inner thighs and then release, bring that knee back into your chest and set the foot down. Okay, bend both knees, reset. And we'll try that on the other side. So left knee comes in. Give it a good squeeze, adjust if you're kind of shifting off your block. And then lengthen the right leg out straight. Lift the heel, hover the heel, and then try to touch the wall in front of you with your right heel, lengthen that leg and then set it back down. Should you notice that top of the thigh area? What are you feeling in there? Hold that for another breath. And then we'll extend the left leg, hold behind the back of the thigh, and then reach through both heels. Hold that another moment. And then release. Both feet flat, reset. So I'm gonna be moving to a little bit more of a challenge. For some of you, it's not gonna be accessible, so that's okay. I want you to listen to your body, and if you can't do the whole thing, I'm gonna give you a modification. So we're gonna turn the block up another level so that it's on that middle level. So it's not all the way up high on the skinny level, it's that medium level. And if that's too much for you, just stay on the lower setting, no worries. Okay, from here, ooh, you know what guys, back up. <laughs> I forgot something I want to do on the low setting. Go back to low, grab your ball. Okay, so if you can, you're gonna grab your single tennis ball. And if it's in the sock, you could still use it, but try to like squeeze the ball so that you have one in your hand, okay? And if you can, you're gonna use a single. Watch out, Missy, I don't think they can see me. Sorry, my kitty's wanting to hang out with me tonight. Okay, you're gonna take the ball, find the inside of your front hip bone, and go down from your hip bone towards your groin. So you're right kind of at the hip crease, but on the inside of that hip bone, okay? Now from here, we're gonna slide the right leg out slowly, but as I slide the right leg out, I'm gonna drag the ball with both hands on the ball, drag the ball up the inside of that hip bone, draw it all the way up, maybe past your navel, maybe to the middle abdomen, and then release and re-bend the knee. And we're gonna do that two more times. So ball down toward the inner groin there. Press in with both hands, start to straighten the leg as you pull up with that ball. And you're giving yourself a little myofascial release, draw up to the middle of the abdomen and reach out through the leg. Let's do that one more time. Try to press into the skin and pull up. Good, okay. Bend both knees, take a pause. 
And we'll do that on the other side. So I wanted to do this before the next thing. So ball at the left inner groin. Start to straighten the leg as you pull the ball up. Past your navel, up toward that middle abdomen, not to the, all the way to the rib cage, you have to go that far. And then two more rounds. Ball presses in and you're tractioning that skin up. One more. All right, set the ball off to the side. Now let's go to that second level. Okay, turn your block up if that feels okay for you. Pause, let your body kind of settle into this position. So already we're opening up that front of the pelvis area. But now the next thing I want you to try, and we might want to watch for a moment. Some of you are not going to be able to probably get there, but I want to show you because some of you can. You're going to walk your right foot back and see if you can start to bring the top of your right foot to the floor. So my knee is pointing forward. My toenails are facing the floor and the top of my foot is facing the floor. And that gives me a nice deep stretch through the quad. Now, some of us, this is gonna to be too much. You might get a foot cramp. So if that's the case, I want you to just straighten the leg because you're still gonna be stretching that hip flexor, um, but not as deep, okay? So those of you who can, the foot's gonna come back. Keep the inner thighs drawing towards each other. Reach your leg or your knee toward the wall in front of you to lengthen and just tip your tailbone a little up. So just kind of just let the ribs get a little heavier. From here, start to bring the other knee in towards your chest. You might stay there or you might extend that leg up. Keep the inner thighs drawing towards each other and reach the right knee or right leg toward the wall in front of you. So some of you, it's similar to what we did before, but now your block's higher. Some of you are getting that deeper stretch with the foot tucked back. Now bring your arms into robot arms, so palms face each other, tuck your shoulders under, lift your chest. So it's kind of like a bridge pose here, supported bridge pose. Okay, release the top leg down, bring the foot out. If you tucked it back, both feet flat. Take a pause. Okay, let's try that on the other side. So again, those of you who can are gonna bring that left foot back, flip the foot over, toenails face the floor. If that's not working for you, you get a foot cramp or it's too intense, leg goes straight or you could even keep it bent if you want. Reach that knee or the leg toward the wall in front of you, inner thighs gently hug in so we're not splaying those knees apart. Then bring the right knee up and in toward the chest and maybe extend it up straight. Reach to that top leg, reach the bottom leg, knee or foot toward the wall in front of you, and then robot arms, tuck your shoulders under, lift your chest. One more breath. And then we'll release the foot down, both feet flat. And then lower back to the first setting, back to your lower supported bridge. Readjust. And let's see if we can take both legs out and both arms overhead. And then just like we did in the very beginning, but now we're on the block, reach through your right arm, right leg. And release. And your left arm, left leg. So that up, slip, down, slip action. Think about pressing your thigh toward the floor. 
Then with the elevation on the block, we get a little bit more opening in those front of the hips. One more round. And after you finish the second side, bend the knees again. And then lift your hips, come off of the block and all the way back down. Take your feet as wide apart as your mat and windshield wiper right to left. The next time your knees are over to the right, let them stay to the right. And we did this one when we did our hip internal rotation practice. Some of you might feel better with a block under the left knee. So I'll put that down there and show that in case you want that. We're gonna take the right foot on top of the left thigh. Without the block, it's gonna, you're gonna go deeper. With the block, it's gonna be a little break. So I'm gonna take the block out now. So I like it to go a little deeper. And then arms overhead, full body stretch. Hold your left wrist and look over your right shoulder. Now, as you inhale, really reach through that left arm. Pull the arm with your right hand. And lengthen as far as you can. Take an inhale. And then exhale, draw your abdomen back and lift it up and in. And then do that again. Inhale, relax a little bit. And then exhale, draw the abdomen up and in, traction your arm. One more time. Now hold the breath out and take another little exhale and try to reach a little more. And then let it all go. Both feet flat, even yourself out. Okay, let's do that on the other side, starting with a windshield wiper right to left. And then next time knees are to the left, let them drop to the left, coming onto the edges of your feet. Lock if you need it under that right knee, inner knee, and then left foot on top of the right thigh. Arms overhead. Hold the right wrist with your left hand. Look over your left shoulder. And as you inhale, reach through that top arm and then exhale, pull the abdomen in and up and reach through your arm. Do that two more rounds. Soften a bit and then reach. Draw your abdomen in and up. One more time. Now hold the breath out, take another little exhale, try to reach a little more. And then let it all go, come back to the center, reset, both feet flat. Windshield wiper once again, clear it all out. Good, back to the center, feet about hips distance apart. Come into your robot arms, palms facing each other, dig those upper arm bones down. And then lengthen your tailbone a little bit toward your feet, your heels, and start to flatten your lower back into the floor. The abdomen is engaged, draw the abdomen back. Dig the arm bones down and start to peel your tailbone up into bridge pose. So start by lifting from the tailbone. So you start to feel your lower glutes engage first and then lift higher and higher from your tailbone. Walk your shoulders in, but keep pressing into the arm bones and get the hips as high as they'll go. 
reach your tailbone forward and then up. Open up those fronts of the hips. One more breath, glutes are engaged. And then let it all go, come all the way down. Pause, reset. Breathe in your belly. Windshield wiper right to left again. And then let's go ahead, pull the knees into the chest. We're about out of time. Go ahead, maybe make some circles on your lower back. <clears throat> so we put a lot of demand on the front of the hip tonight, on the hip flexor region, on the psoas region. We work to try and correct that pelvic tilt. And so when we do that, the lower back's not always happy with us. So give it some love, circle it out, go the other direction. So it can be really challenging to correct, you know, an imbalanced pelvis. If it's what we call neuromuscular, it's a little easier because we work by helping the brain tell the body what to do and release. But if it's fascia, the fascia has adapted to that position over time, it is much harder to create a lasting change. So we have to do things over and over again and again to create that change. Happy baby, if you like. Open up those inner thighs. Maybe again, you want a rocking motion. And then hug the knees back into the chest. And we are gonna finish the way we started. So if you were at a sofa or a chair, or if you were using your props, set yourself up again, same position you started in. So maybe you wanna use your blocks and give yourself a little ramp. So you put your bolster or your bed pillows on top with a blanket on top, and maybe that's your setup. But if you have a sofa or a chair, that would be even better. And then we'll come down and you guys are gonna get into Shavasana. I'm gonna stay seated. So take a couple of moments to really settle. Make any last minute adjustments. And then just like we did in the very beginning, can you notice your lower back? What the lower back feels like, what the curve of the lower back feels like. Notice the back ribs, how they feel. Are they still thrusting forward away from the floor? Maybe things are a little bit more relaxed into the ground now. And with the thigh bones in this more of a 90 degree position, the lower back can relax. Come into a very soft, soft breath. And remember our word, release. So we started by releasing being in this position to relax the lower back, the pelvis and the psoas. And we did a little somatic movement to continue to create suppleness. We did some strengthening work with that knee into the chest work. And then we did the lunges to really stretch things out. And those hip flexors, all the bridge work we did, the myofascial work. Hopefully created some change, at least for the moment. Just knowing that the psoas is this more of a sensory organ and always responding to our traumas, our stresses, 
Even acupuncturists will say, if we needle the area around the psoas, we can have an emotional release. So let everything go now, let things flow, whether it's the breath, the emotions, the body, back to that word, release. Let the back melt into the ground, back ribs spread, lower back, sacrum. Release everything into the ground with every breath cycle. Staying where you are, I'm going to share a final reading. This is um, by Mark Meepo. And it's from this book called The Way Under the Way, called Disrobing in Time. Nothing is easy. But to tell you the truth, the truth of what I see and feel, this somehow cleanses my eye and it becomes clear what to do. In my pain, I forget to admit what is true and things get worse. Because I don't want to be sad. I don't admit that I already am. And then I feel like I am drowning. Because I don't want things to change. I don't admit that they already have. And then I feel like the wheel of life is tearing me apart. The greatest power we have when feeling powerless is to admit what is already true. Then the stepping stones of eternity rise out of the mud, showing us where to go. So I often find with working with the psoas, it's part of the body that asks us to feel. And you may have heard kind of the little anecdotal notes of yoga teachers saying we store our emotions in our hips and this is really where that comes in the psoas responding to our emotions and what we try not to feel and what we try to suppress but when we start to release it sometimes we feel that which we were avoiding So take a moment now, notice how your lower back feels after all of our work tonight. Notice maybe any freedom in your breath. Notice the quality of the mind. And start to invite in the smaller movements. The slightly deeper breath. When you're ready, maybe you want to do another knee hug and eventually come over onto one side for a pause. So that pose we were just in, we did the beginning and the end. Um, so probably at least 10 minutes total between the bookends there. Um, but if you do have kind of imbalance in your psoas and your pelvis, it's a good position to put yourself in for 10 minutes at a time. So when you're ready, go ahead and come on back up to sit and we'll close our practice. We'll sit up nice and tall. 
And you may notice once you've released a bit of psoas, it feels easier to sit up tall. And there's not this kind of pulling of the spine downward. Let's bring palms together in front of the heart space. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, bow inward. Thank you for joining me tonight. Namaste. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Feel 